Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be correcting a small mistake from the previous video from a few days ago. Specifically the one about the orbit of Tesla Roadster that was launched by Elon Musk a few days ago. Now the thing about it is that it wasn't really a big deal that there was a mistake. The, the fact that the car was even launched into space was already pretty amazing. But there's actually a few people out there that are currently trying to very specifically calculate the orbit of this object. And today we're going to be talking about this and really do some very accurate sort of calculations. And I'm going to show you how to actually find out all of this information by yourself using Universe Sandbox and also a few websites. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So going to Mars has always been sort of a dream for Elon Musk and so he decided to launch his Tesla Roadster toward it and turns out that um, he originally thought that it was going to a um, to the asteroid belt at a distance of 2.68 astronomical units. Turns out this was a very hastily calculated value that was not correct, it was actually wrong. And uh, the actual value is a lot closer to Mars, which is good news for him chances of Mars encounter are now much, much larger. Today I'm going to show you when it's going to uh, actually come closest to Mars, and by it I mean the car, car in space, and also give you some more info where you can calculate stuff yourself. So first of all, let's start with the craze, who actually found all of this stuff and who basically tweeted all of this stuff online. This person right here, Jonathan McDowell, he's an astronomer at Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and he's been tweeting about Elon's car for a very, very long time with some really cool info, including the most recent uh, tweet that someone actually posted and he retweeted about the measurement of brightness changes in the, in the car essentially, which shows us how fast it spins. And turns out it spins at about um, 4.75 minutes per rotation. Very, very cool. I mean, how useful is this? Not very, but still nevertheless pretty cool and shows you how people actually usually measure the rotation, uh, rotations of things like asteroids. And this is the same technique we use to measure the rotation of uh, first, interstellar, first interstellar object detected, uh, which was Oumuamua a few months ago. The other very interesting tweet was in regards to this. This is actually the first observation, uh, or I guess the first independent observation of the vehicle that you, you saw flying right there. And this was from uh, the observatory in Arizona. And you can kind of see it move across the skies, which is actually pretty impressive. Uh, it's still pretty close for, uh, for uh, to Earth, so it's still pretty easy to see. Uh, but in the next few months, it's going to get farther and farther away. But really the biggest tweet was this, the uh, recalculation of the orbit of Tesla. And here we have the new values at 0.98 uh, uh, periapsis and point, oh, 1.66 uh, apoapsis with about 1.05 degree inclination. So this is a lot, a lot more accurate than uh, it was in my previous video, but mostly because we didn't really have much to work with. Now we have all of this data from NASA and it's actually coming directly from the NASA observation website, or, or basically an, a kind of a NASA diary. As a matter of fact, uh, this is what it's called. It's called Ephemerides, and this is the Greek uh, word for diaries. And here, uh, NASA basically keeps all of the data about every single space object that you can totally access at any time and just, just to see where things are in space. Now, they just recently added Tesla. You can go in here, type Tesla, and once you look it up, it's going to automatically add SpaceX Roadster spacecraft Tesla with a designation minus 143.205 to the list. Now, if you would like to find out how close and when it will get to Mars, all you have to do is select Mars right here. I'm going to run this for about 10 years and uh, it will generate this relatively large table of values. But what, the only value we're interested in is this right here, Delta. So this is in astrom astronomical units, and we're looking for the smallest possible number, and I believe the first smallest number is actually going to be right around here. There you go, that's it. Uh, October of 2020, it's going to be at a distance of approximately like 7 million kilometers-ish, which is still pretty far away, it's not going to get captured by Mars, but this is the closest first approach to Mars, which means that Elon Musk can celebrate, he kind of sort of made it to Mars with his car. The next approach is going to happen in, uh, I think, 10 years after this. 
And so basically here you can kind of see the values. But how about, what is it going to be the closest to Earth? That's what I'm uh, kind of curious about, in case we decide to capture it again. In other words, it's kind of like performing Grand Theft Auto Space, or Grand Theft Auto 6, STA, Space Theft Auto. Anyway, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the closest approach to Earth and when it's going to happen, just so we can at least maybe take a look at the car again. And here, once again, we're looking at Delta value, so right now it's still pretty close. This is the distance as of February 11, and then it starts flying away, and the next close approach is not in the next 10 years. As a matter of fact, the closest they will get is going to be like 0.3 astronomical units, which is actually pretty far away. It's it's actually like half the distance to Mars. Uh, so yeah, none of these are very promising. In other words, we're not gonna be seeing uh, Tesla Roadster for the next 10 years near Earth at all. And just to give you a visual idea of what the orbit looks like, uh, now here is the Tesla Roadster represented by this incredibly looking beautiful pumpkin, which is why else we would choose anything else, right? And we're going to basically run the simulation and I kind of tried to make the uh, orbital parameters as accurate as possible, including uh, the periapsis and apoapsis here and um, the seven major axis of 1.33 astronomical units, which means that one year on Tesla Roadster is going to be about 1.53 years on Earth. All right, so let's run this and uh, basically visualize the orbital parameters of Tesla Roadster by running this a little bit faster. And here it is separating from Earth, flying into its own sort of orbit. And we can now even basically enable orbits just to see what it's going to be like. So this is what Tesla Roadster is going to be doing for the next possibly thousands, possibly millions, and possibly even billions of years. And chances are that if we ever come here and decide to retrieve it, it might actually be one of the most valuable historical findings of the future because of the craziness of the event and because of what was achieved with this particular launch. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to correct a bit of a mistake that was made and I uh, just wanted to discuss the idea of the uh, tool that you can use from NASA to basically track all of these objects and of course show you some of the other things that were discovered in the last few days since the launch of Tesla Roadster. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, space out, and as always, bye bye. And if you still haven't subscribed, well, consider subscribing because in, on this channel, all we do is basically learn through video games and learn about sciences, space, and other unusual events, but mostly using video games. See you guys later. Bye bye.